Well, the day that Bert won the X Prize was a hugely significant one for us. I remember chatting to Brian Binney, the pilot on that epic flight. The vibrations go away, the shrieking, shrilling noise of that rock motor disappears, and you get this instant karma of weightlessness. You cannot appreciate the experience just by looking at a magazine cover, just what it is like to take it in with your own eyes. Since the announcement in 2004, the project has reached and passed many important milestones. We have a truly inspiring design for our home at Spaceport America in New Mexico. An ever-increasing family of pioneering customers. And of course, beautiful new vehicles, now in an extensive test program before they start commercial service. Our first Virgin Galactic astronauts are booking their own place in history as pioneers of a new space age. And for them, the journey has already started. With the end of the oil era approaching and climate change progressing faster than most models have been predicting, safer, cheaper and more flexible access to space is essential. Well, I hope you will be as excited and inspired by Virgin Galactic's mission as I am. And see you up there. Steve Fossett has said to Richard Branson he wanted to attempt the world record of doing a non-stop high-altitude flight around the world uh, and doing it on a single tank of fuel and taking the record that obviously had been created by Bert Rutan's brother and take it forward into the 21st century. We wanted to do a carbon mold-breaking project in aviation that we could afford to do, that could give us a lot of learning about carbon composites, that could also give us a case to take to Boeing and Airbus when we were talking about composites in the aircraft that they were designing and keep pushing them. And we decided to prove our point to them by building this aircraft, and Steve wanted to prove his point of creating another world record. This project brought, brought a couple of colleagues and myself to the factory. I was overseeing this project for Virgin Atlantic and I was at the factory and Bert knew that we'd registered the name Virgin Galactic in 1999. We'd been in Mojave in 1999 and Bert and Richard had met and we'd had lunch with Bert when we were looking at the rotary rocket project, the Roton project, to see if we wanted to invest in that, which we decided not to. But Bert had hinted at that time that he was going to look at the X Prize uh, and he was looking for a backer. In the meantime, September the 11th happened, and Virgin had, we had enough issues of our own to deal with, but Paul Allen, as you know, backed him. And Bert showed me the uh, SS-1 project. And that made me think at the time when Bert showed me Spaceship One under that cover, and I phoned up Richard Branson, swore twice before saying, it's a spaceship and we've got to do this. It, it made me think also about the fact that what Bert was doing was actually following a pioneer. You know, we have a motto in Virgin. And I know it looks like sometimes we're very pioneering, and we often are the first to market with an idea, but we're usually following a pioneer of some sort. As Richard Ranson says, it's always better to follow a pioneer and pick up their ideas. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single-engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system, with its V-tail design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at cirrusdesign.com. So what we've done with our system is we've taken the learnings that you saw in the film from SS1 and those history-making X-Prize flights, and we haven't done too much with them, really. The Spaceship One heritage is exactly where we've gone with Spaceship Two. There's a few little bits and pieces on it, mostly customer-related, safety-related. I'll explain the customer-related bits. You know, the customer-related bits are, we had to build a much bigger spaceship, but the heritage of Spaceship One is definitely there. Air launch, we've taken forward that from Bert's X Prize. The carefree re-entry, we've taken that forward. And of course, the 100% carbon composite construction. So this heritage, this evolution of how we got to Eve, our first mothership, our first White Knight 2 mothership is called after Richard Branson's mother. We took as much out of the global flyer in this design as we did out of uh, White Knight 1. And the reason we did that was really all about market research and all about trying to think about this project in as sensible a way as we could. 
the vision of going to space is something that's always been close to Richard Branson's heart. The vision of seeing Spaceship One and making a phone call and saying, we've got to do something with this. But then you've got to get the hard-nosed reality of a large commercial organization. And in that large commercial organization, you've got the reality of people who want to see some evidence that you can actually develop a market. You might remember when uh, the Virgin Galactic project was first announced, we thought we'd be flying by 2009 when we first announced it, because our initial plan was to rebuild Spaceship One, rebuild White Knight One, and start our commercial activities with the early launch customers, get them monetized, get it going on that basis. But we discovered something in that market research that was very exciting for me personally, because I wasn't particularly keen on the idea of just rebuilding Spaceship One and White Knight One. I couldn't see the, the, the use of capital doing that when we should be going for the next generation vehicle straight away. But it was the customers that came to the rescue over that rather than sensible business planning because the customers said to us, if we're going to go into space with you, we do not want to go in a little spaceship where we can't move around and experience weightlessness. Every single piece of research we did, everything we found from Futron, everything we found everywhere was telling us that what people wanted as much as anything else as well as seeing the beauty of the blue planet, as well as seeing the thinness of the atmosphere, as well as seeing the blackness of space, as well as experiencing those G-forces on the way up, as well as experiencing the silence of space, which is something I'll say a bit more about as well, they wanted to experience weightlessness. So we moved very fast on that. We persuaded Virgin Group that we should go straight for the big picture. We don't want to build something that only has one commercial use only that doesn't have all the capabilities that we need, that isn't adaptable. We want to follow those Boeing engineers of the 60s who were building the world's biggest plane for commercial passenger use. The airlines were telling them they didn't want it at the time. So those people at Boeing, they put that cabin up high. They copied the original Bristol freighter from the 50s. So it would open. They made a commercial cargo plane, which was also a passenger plane. And what a success it was. And that's what we are trying to replicate in this project. And our customers have helped us to do it. Because they've told us they want weightlessness, so that means we had to design and build something a lot bigger so as we could take six of them up to get the economics right. They could still move around the cabin, but suddenly we've got a spaceship that we can use for other industrial purposes. And that's exactly the thinking that we were trying to undertake. And we did fulfill Virgin Group's next requirement, which was you've got to get $10 million in deposits for this theoretical vehicle before we'll let you start building it with BERT. And on the basis of being able to tell the customers we could give them those things, we got the $10 million in deposits. Welcome to the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource. Real-time, 24-7 online, audio, and video programming, where aviation has been getting updated for over a decade. Distributing over 11,000 stories, features, audio, and video programs every year, only ANN covers aviation and aerospace with this much depth, insight, and expertise. Check us out on the web at aero-news.net. So we've ended up with a much, much, much bigger vehicle than anyone expected when they first saw this project underway. We kept it very closely under wraps until New York about 18 months ago when we unveiled the design as construction had started. And we've designed a lot of capabilities into this vehicle. You know, the reason for this Virgin Atlantic Global Flyer twin hull and this cantilevered wing over here is that we can now put anything under here. We call it internally the Linux software of space and it's open architecture, and it's literal open architecture in this case. And the spaceship is big enough for our space tourist customers. The spaceship has also now got the capability of doing parabolas between 110 and 140 kilometers and taking space scientists up with racks of experiments. And we're working very closely with a number of people uh, around both the United States and in the UK and Japan on looking at how we could monetize a space science business, and that's going very well at the moment. But it's also just a load vehicle here. We could carry an unmanned spaceship, which could carry a satellite into space. And we've given the capability to Bert. We've asked for 17 tons lift capability, and we know what we can do with that in the future. And we know others could do with it, because it could be somebody else who develops a vehicle to go under this. And this can also be used as generally a load-carrying vehicle. <laughs> 